This video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is one of the biggest tragedies in aviation. In the 1950s, the British came up with a unorthodox new design for a swept wing supersonic airliner, one that was more advanced than anything the world had ever seen. Elegantly designed with a top speed of Mach 2 and capable of flying England to Australia in a single bound, it garnered attention the world over for its potential to change commercial aviation, as well as its military applications against the rising Soviet threat. But building this concept would require sneaky tricks and cunning to produce, and lead it on a path of betrayal by the very friends of the British, the Americans themselves. This is the story of the plane of yesterday's tomorrow, the Vickers Swallow. The history behind the Vickers Swallow starts with one of the company's most famous engineers, Sir Neville Barnes Wallace, the man behind the design of the Dam Busters, a special kind of bouncing bomb used in World War II to destroy German dams. During the war, engineers like Wallace got to design and build all sorts of crazy aircraft, everything from missiles to flying wing bombers. With an uneasy peace spreading across the globe after the end of the war, these same engineers now could perfect their creations, and in this case, wildest fantasy. For Wallace, his new aircraft was so wildly different from the planes flying at the time that he dubbed it the Wing Controlled Aerodyne. Naturally, the sources of funding for such an idea were incredibly skeptical, so in order to prove that it could be worked and applied, he decided to create a test model of the concept for the anti-aircraft missile called the Green Lizard. His project would have a cheeky name called the Wild Goose, and unmanned UAV test concepts would be built. They would be elegant and lack many of the control surfaces that we have in planes today. It would actually control its flight by slightly moving the wings and thus affecting the resulting airflow, which is perfect for high speeds. After two failed attempts, the third version of the unmanned UAV took to the sky and proved that the concept would actually work. Although the landing wasn't successful, and the fourth version managed to work just fine until the remote pilot smashed it into a concrete wall in an attempt to show that it wouldn't crash into a concrete wall. By this time, the government had seemingly caught on to this wild goose project and shut it down, or rather lost interest in the missile that the project was supposed to be building. But it was too late, because Wallace had enough information to move forward with his real goal, the Swallow. This jet was fast and before its time. Do you know what else is fast from the future, but here now? Squarespace websites. If you want your website to go faster than light speed and bring your company into the jet age, Squarespace is really the best website builder out there. Their websites are already optimized for mobile phones, have the ability to run powerful email campaigns, and they have a fantastic e-commerce tech built right into their framework. So if you need an online store, it's just a couple of clicks. To launch your own site, go to www.squarespace.com found and get 10% off your first site and domain. Every click that you do today helps, so if you want that warm and fuzzy feeling, click that link to check out perhaps your future website. Thanks again to Squarespace. The first initial designs of the Vickers Swallow saw that it is a supersonic airliner, one that could be able to fly from London to Sydney without stopping in only 10 hours. 
While it wasn't exactly shopped around to airlines, you can imagine that this was 20 years ahead of anything else in the market back in the 1950s. So I hope you enjoy the Pan Am livery. It would be able to carry around 100 passengers in a 2-3 configuration, all in one class. The seats recline, but it's a far cry from the comfort of anything we have today in business class. But that's what you get when you can cross the Atlantic in just a few hours. Now, I know I don't normally show my face, but for this next part, I'm still a little bit confused and I wanted to ask the audience. The only blueprints that I have right here show that the aircraft seats are actually facing backwards to the direction of travel, something that I have not really seen with any other commercial transport projects. So if anybody knows why the seats are facing the wrong way with this supersonic airliner, I would love to know right down in the comments. Uh, back to the show. However, building a new supersonic passenger plane from scratch would be insanely expensive and Vickers didn't have the funding to build the Swallow. So it was thought that the funding could be instead secured if it had a military application. But with the original missile off the table, another project would have to apply. The British government at the time was looking for a new supersonic bomber to replace the Vickers Valiant, and the Swallow fit the bill. Wallace saw the potential and started working on the project, having put its military use first rather than his civilian aspirations. This is what he came up with. The design of this aircraft was to be very interesting and unconventional. The first decision was to remove the tail and any kind of vertical stabilizers. Instead, the role of the rudder would be given to its engines. This would allow for a reduction of up to 20% of drag in flight, which was a lot back then and is still something today that aerospace firms are chasing. The cockpit was actually retractable because a lot of the heat and drag would be created in supersonic speeds where visibility wasn't much of an importance and the pilot could fly on instruments only. Just like the Concorde or the 2144, it would tip the nose downwards for better visibility during takeoff and landing. But this design meant that the cockpit had a separate pressure bubble to the passenger cabin, which is a complete nightmare. Now hold on to your seat trays because this is where the engineering reaches the next level. There were two pairs of engines, namely the Bristol BE-38s, located in nacelles on each wing, both being rotated during the flight to face forward unless the pilot wanted to use them differently. You see, both the engine pairs would move horizontally and vertically on their wing pylons or mounting points, however you'd like to call them, and allow for vectorized thrust control. For example, when both pairs moved slightly to the left or right, it would have a similar effect to a conventional rudder directing the airflow to either side. That was the yaw axes, where the pitch axes would be again controlled with the engines now moving upwards or downwards, enabling the aircraft to gain or lose altitude. Rolls could be achieved by moving the engines in opposite directions, just like the ailerons would direct air on an actual aircraft. Isn't this just an absolutely insane way to fly an aircraft? If you think so, click that subscribe button because with this channel, I'm just getting started. All of this was nice in theory, but now imagine the aircraft losing at least one of the engines. It would be completely uncontrollable and the pilot would have no option but to eject. And if it was in a commercial configuration, that I shudder to think what would have happened to all those passengers. But this wasn't the end of the interesting engineering solutions with this aircraft. We still have to talk all about its military application. The Swallow was designed to carry nuclear weapons and test models were all painted in the so-called nuclear white color. Basically, extremely gloss white that would deflect heat and light from, say, a nuclear blast in case, you know, the end of the world was happening. 
Wallace also developed an aircraft shape that was specifically designed to reduce radar reflection, the subject of a patent filed in the autumn of 1954. Rather than go for angular, he went for an elliptical cross-section, but arranged it in such a way that only a small part of the fuselage would reflect normal to the surface, unless directly overhead the radar station. So this plane seemed to be ahead of its time, simultaneously a supersonic commercial transport and a stealth nuclear bomber. So what the heck happened? By 1957, the project was reaching the point where it either goes all in or goes home. The British government didn't show much interest in the project, although during testing, most of the technical problems were solved and decided by the end of 1957, to withdraw the funding. Oh my goodness, we can't possibly afford it. Think of the thousand million pounds which a certain aeroplane has cost. However, this wasn't the end. The guys from NASA actually picked up on this project and wanted to develop the Swallow further with the US Navy also taking interest in the design. Several adjustments had been made, like adding canards, folding or retractable tails, which definitely was something new, but in the end, due to different programs being developed at the time, like the SST by Boeing, there was no serious interest in the Swallow, and it was now truly the end of the project. However, some of the solutions that they created for the aircraft to make it work, like the mechanics behind the folding wings, were pretty much stolen from the British by their US colleagues and used down the line in the development of the F-111. The Vickers team certainly thought that the F-111 wing pivot infringed on their patents and spent about six months during the late 1950s working on patent litigation, although in the end it was dropped. However, the whole affair undoubtedly left the British feeling that the US had taken the best bits of the Vickers Swallow and didn't pay them a dime. Wallace went on to propose several other interesting concepts like cargo submarines before going into retirement, but the Vickers Swallow would be his piece de resistance that was cut off at the knees. Now just fancy a Royal Air Force equipped with aeroplanes like that, that will take off at about 90 miles an hour, almost soundlessly, will land at 75 or 80, all fuel burnt, and can yet fly higher than two and a half times the speed of sound. We should be mistress of the aeronautical world. What a marvellous thing. Thanks for joining me on this crazy supersonic ride. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and check out the Patreon if you want to see early access on other videos, behind the scenes content or talk to me directly. See you in the next video.